want to say, first of all, welcome and thank you for joining us today. I'm going to be learning a little bit more um, about efficient, powerful, and some all-encompassing tax compliance tools that you can use basically year-round to curtail errors and hopefully save your organization both time and money. I am Lauren Skinner Johnson and I will be moderating today's event. And then a couple of quick things before we get started. Today's participants will be on mute for the duration of the event. So if you do have a question, please type it in either the chat window or the Q&A window that's also in the panel on the right-hand side of your screen. And then we'll do our very best to answer as many questions as we can at the end of today's presentation. One other thing I want to bring your attention to is that tomorrow, Friday, April 13th, is the last day to take advantage of the double early bird discount for Convey's annual tax and regulatory conference. The 2012 C2 Summit is going to be at the Omni Dallas Hotel in Dallas, Texas. It starts on Sunday, September 23rd and goes through Wednesday, September 25th. Sorry, Tuesday, September 25th. And then the C2 Summit is a live tax information reporting seminar that includes about a half day of Convey Solution training on Sunday and then two full days of regulatory and compliance sessions on Monday and Tuesday. So you can visit c2summit.convey.com for more agenda information as well as registration information and you can get up to $400 off a three-day pass. So take advantage of that discount. It's going away um, Friday at midnight. And then, before we get started with today's webinar, I do want to get a better understanding of our audience through a couple of polling questions. So the first question you should see pop up on your screen here shortly is, what is your biggest concern as it relates to information reporting? A, B, notices or penalties. B, increasing regulations or complexity. C, costs. D, security or E, system issues. And again, we'll just give you a quick minute to review those questions. If you could just click on the answer that suits you, and then we'll get going in just a second. Okay, thank you for taking the time to do that poll. And we just have one additional question that we'd like to ask before I hand it over to Neil. The second question relates to security standards um, and how you feel about that at your organization. The second question is, is your solution up to industry security standards? And it's just yes, no, or unsure. So again, you should see that polling question pop up. Select A, B, or C, and we'll get started very shortly. Okay, thank you very much for your participation in the polls. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Neil Lefevre, who is a product manager with Convey. Great, thanks, Lauren. So today we're going to be talking about, um, and, and actually I just want to make sure that everybody uh, can hear me. So if you can just type yes in the chat or yes in the Q&A, um, we're getting some feedback. Uh, so if you can't hear me, please click on. OK, excellent, very good. So today we're going to be talking about um, what we've titled uh, must-have uh, tax tools. 
And these are uh, various tools we found that uh, different organizations have found to be extremely beneficial uh, to help in streamline their information reporting processes and save them a lot of costs, headaches, penalties uh, throughout the tax season. So we'll start off with just a quick uh, overview to kind of set the stage, then we'll talk about uh, what some of these specific tools are. And then at the end, if we have time, we'll open it up uh, to some Q&A. So uh, just a general kind of overview, uh, kind of the state of the state of, of compliance, we'll call it. Uh, in general, uh, as most of us are aware, there's just more and more change and an increased focus on information reporting. Uh, if you were watching some of the slides, uh, kind of the previous slides in this webinar, you saw some facts about uh, the tax gap uh, is growing and, you know, one way the IRS is combating that is with information reporting. Uh, penalties in 2011, many of us know, have increased for late filings or incorrect filings. The complexity continues to grow. As it relates to information reporting, there's continual change. A number of forms uh, have been added, like the 1099-K and are being updated, like the 1099-B for cost basis. So it's just continuing to grow and grow in complexity, and the cost to support and manage that complexity uh, continues to uh, increase. Also, the frequency of these changes is becoming more and more. Uh, if you had 1099-K reporting responsibilities, for example, uh, you know that the IRS was constantly changing that form throughout last year. Uh, and the states are, are also kind of doing the same thing. Uh, they are also short in revenues and, and know that information reporting will help close their tax gap and increase their revenues as well. So the states are taking notice. They're increasing their requirements as it relates to uh, state filings as well. I know in, in 2011, uh, Convey noted a number of states that increased their overall information reporting requirements uh, by requiring more data and in some cases requiring new forms to be submitted that they previously had. So overall, you know, the, the complexity and, and the cost to manage and maintain this complexity is continuing to grow uh, year over year. So uh, how is your organization keeping up? Uh, very, um, a question that is, is coming up more and more uh, as we talk to different organizations and, and frankly what we hear a lot of times is uh, people aren't able to keep up and uh, their systems that they're currently using are they're becoming obsolete. They're 10, 20, 30 years old in some cases and, and they just can't consume uh, the changes as fast as the IRS and the states are making them. So it's causing lots of issues internally and in some cases their information reporting systems are actually limiting the organization, their organization's ability to maintain compliance uh, which creates and puts the organization in, in a very sticky situation. Uh, and as these changes continue to happen year over year, the risk posed to these organizations from a penalty and exposure standpoint is only getting greater. So a lot of organizations are, are combating that by moving to new platforms and in a lot of cases software as a service uh, type platforms. So when you say software as a service, uh, a lot of kind of older programs are installed in-house internally. Uh, man, maintained and managed by an IT department who has lots of other tasks and things that are uh, going on uh, and they're just on a list of applications that are being managed. And in the software as a service world, uh, you're actually just logging into an application that actually lives on the internet. So it, it's very convenient because when you log into the system, there's nothing that you need to install on your machine. You can log in from your computer and, and everything just works and if your computer uh, breaks down or has an issue and you get a new computer, there's nothing to transfer or maintain or manage when you log in next time. Everything's there just as you as you left it. Uh, so uh, the system's always up to date. I mentioned in the previous slide that uh, the, the states and the feds are continuing to put out all these updates. A lot of times there's not a lot of time to react to these changes. And the nice thing about a software as a service application is that updates are generally applied much much more quickly than a traditional in-house or, or legacy type uh, application. And this is extremely important as deadlines are coming up and, and anyone who has state reporting requirements knows kind of knows this pain 
a state puts out an update very late in the year, and uh, it takes time to get software updated, deployed, and so in software as a service world, those updates are applied much more quickly, allowing you more time to make sure that you're in compliance with those new uh, regulations. And then uh, Lauren asked a security question, which security is continuing to become a focus for organizations, especially in the information reporting world where you're posing things like name and TIN information. Uh, generally, software as a service companies who kind of focus on uh, these types of applications, uh, security is at top of mind uh, in all, uh, at all points in the process uh, because that's their, their focus is this information reporting software as a service platform security space into the entire process. Uh, and I'll just put on the top uh, of priority lists. And then also, since you're not managing and maintaining these in-house and internal solutions, your IT department can focus on other uh, other projects and tasks in their list and don't need to focus on maintaining these old legacy type uh, applications. So with that being said, uh, kind of the first uh, tool that I'd like to, to talk through uh, has to do with loading data into your information reporting system, uh, also known as importing. So a lot of organizations, when we, when we talk to uh, them, one of their biggest pain points and issues is getting the data into their tax information reporting system and getting uh, an updated system to help manage this uh, saves tons and tons of time, especially when you're in January and your deadlines are short uh, you need to get this data loaded very quickly so that you can get your forms out the door. So first and foremost, uh, your tax information reporting tool should be able to consume data uh, very quickly and efficiently. And it should be able to take that information from your payment system. So a lot of organizations today have a very uh, kind of convoluted process of taking data from their source systems loading it into what a lot of them call a data translator. And what, what they really mean by that is um, it's a tool which actually takes in the files and then outputs kind of a, a simplified or generic um, data import that then goes to the tax system. And at the end of the day, that's really an extra step in the process. And in an ideal world, your information reporting tool can just take the data feeds directly from the payment systems and eliminate all those additional steps and all those annual updates to those data translators uh, that need to happen by your IT department. So I'm sure there's a, a number of folks on call that have kind of kind of worked through that and, and struggled through that uh, year over year. So definitely eliminating some of those steps is extremely important uh, in this process. Uh, also, your information reporting tool should be taking data from all these different systems in a very flexible, fast fast manner, multiple file formats, uh, but really you should be also focusing on kind of um, the centralization when this happens. When you, when you are able to take all these data feeds in from these various systems, uh, it allows you to really centralize your information reporting process, which is extremely critical, and it's critical for a couple reasons. One, it gives you kind of management oversight into the overall process. If you're process isn't centralized today, how are you sure that the various business units or groups in your organization are printing all the forms that they should? How are you sure that they're doing the proper state reporting and withholdings that are happening? So it's extremely important to centralize this process so that you and the tax department can know that the proper things are being completed on time so that you can avoid penalties, audits, and a whole mess uh, further down the line. Also, from an importing standpoint, if you are bringing in all this data and centralizing the process, this can have a customer service impact as well. Uh, if you're able to load this data uh, and provide it to your customer service folks, they'll be able to answer questions much more efficiently and effectively. And I'll touch on more, uh, more about that uh, in a minute. So I just kind of wanted to step through a quick quick uh, diagram, and, and this uh, this is a lot to look at, I know. Uh, Lauren's laughing at me right now. Um, <laughs> Good luck on the quick part, Neil. Yeah, yeah. so I, I'm not going to take you through each and every box uh, in this diagram, but uh, believe it or not, this is actually what a lot of uh, organizations, what their information reporting process looks like. 
There's data feeds coming from all over the place. It's going into a data converter, data conversion, or data consolidation process, uh, which then kind of continues to flow through. And again, I don't want to touch on all these points, but similar to down at the bottom, there's a manual process section. Uh, a lot of organizations, when they're decentralized, they have manual processes to do data entry and, and all these other things. And then things like prior year corrections are an issue as well. So there's there's kind of this very huge convoluted process uh, which a lot of organizations go through. And if you haven't documented your information reporting end to end well, I would highly uh, encourage you to do so. And if it comes out looking kind of anything like this, um, you should, you're definitely a candidate to kind of look at, at various ways to improve this process. So, um, you know, what your process should should more be in line with is something that, again, it's still kind of a lot a lot to look at. But information reporting is a complex process. I don't want to you know, tell you that there's a magic bullet which will make it, you know, one click and you're done. Uh, but it should be a very streamlined process that follows a very simple centralized flow. Uh, you can see here on the left you have your data feeds. Those go directly into your information reporting solution. And then you have your various outputs from print statements, transmittals, state reporting, uh, and as well as B notices and withholding. So everything kind of occurring in a centralized streamlined process. So, um, we'll go ahead and, and move on now that, you've <laughs> now that you're uh, a little bit wide-eyed. Um, let's move on to the report. So uh, another area that, that organizations tend to, to struggle with and, and create issues are reporting. And reporting is an extremely important component of information reporting for a, a variety of reasons. So first and foremost, I mentioned in the importing section about management oversight. Uh, if you have a decentralized process, uh, reporting is very cumbersome and, and is an issue because you can't simply run a report and find out how many forms you have or um, what's left to do. Uh, so kind of the first step is, is that centralization, aggregate everything into, into one central area. But once you have it there, the reporting on that data should be extremely easy and flexible. Uh, it should also be on demand at your fingertips. So what I mean by that is a lot of organizations say if they want to get a report out of their system, they actually have to contact their IT department or uh, another group to actually help them create or uh, generate these reports. And this creates a bottleneck, especially in these tight deadline situations. So your information reporting tool should have an easy to use reporting module where you can get at the information that you need whenever you need it and not have to wait for uh, anyone to create that for you. And also your IT department doesn't want to spend time creating all these reports either. So if you can get reporting up directly out of your information reporting tool, it's going to be much better for you and it's also going to speed up uh, and, and streamline the process for your IT uh, group as well. A lot of other uh, kind of things we hear uh, is have have to do with kind of flexibility as it relates to importing or uh, to reporting. Excuse me. So you should be able to easily run reports, schedule reports whenever you want them. A lot of organizations are uh, moving to uh, nightly reports so that when they get in in the morning, they're able to review reports about how many corrections were made the day before. Uh, get that management oversight and visibility into the process, and they're able to quickly review those in the morning when they get in the office, and they don't even have to spend time creating and running those reports. And your system should also be able to produce data in other formats. So an example of this would be run a report and drop it in Excel. A lot of folks, especially in tax groups and accounting groups, you know, they live in Excel, they love Excel, they're very comfortable in it, so being able to produce data in Excel where you can easily manipulate it, run reports, create pie charts, that is extremely powerful. And then your system should also be able to create reports for uh, other systems. So if changes are being made in your tax system, you should be able to run a report which you can feed back to the payment system to provide them updates so that everything stays in sync and you don't run into problems later on. So a couple uh, areas where we've seen organizations really streamline their process and, and reports really help them out, uh, just kind of some food for thought, uh, change reports. So from a change report uh, standpoint, 
running reports on which customer service agents are making changes or requesting changes. Uh, what's the overall withholding liability your organization has? Is it going up? Is it going down year over year? What's your exposure from an IRS standpoint? Uh, another great one which really helps organization is uh, organizations is one that we call uh, change reason. And what I mean by that is when changes are being made to the tax system, i.e. corrections are happening, actually requiring users to put that change type into a bucket. So when they make the change, the system asks them, why are you making the change? Is it, was it a source system error? Was it a customer request? What was the actual reason? And then running the reports against that change reason so that you can get to the root cause of the problem. So instead of just making changes year over year over year, you can actually look at why changes are occurring and it, let's say it's a one particular business unit or source area which is generating 80% of your corrections. You can actually go back to that business unit, work with them to try to understand what's going on, what are the issues so that you can reduce your overall corrections year over year. That's going to help you from a B notice standpoint if their name and TIN changes. That's going to uh, also just reduce the overall penalty exposure you have from uh, correction filings, as well as save your customer service folks uh, issues because every time a correction gets made, if someone has to call your customer service department, there's a huge cost to that. Someone has to be there to answer the call. They have to actually request the change or make the change. From a print and mail standpoint, you have to now reprint that form and send that form. When you look at the overall cost of information reporting, print and mail is usually one of the top costs. So implementing simple things like tracking why changes are occurring in the system can greatly reduce your overall information reporting costs. And in a lot of times, in a lot of cases, it's, it's very easy to recoup the cost of a system change by doing simple things like tracking why changes are occurring and, and really streamlining that process and, and preventing issues up front. So the next area I'd like to jump into is security. Again, this is an issue that we hear a lot about. Uh, and I, I don't mean overall security, I mean specific information reporting security. So what we often hear from folks is that only the tax department has access to the information reporting system and data. And that's generally not an ideal situation. So Ideally, especially if you're a larger organization, what you want to do or, or strive towards is kind of spreading out some of that work to other areas in the organization. And you can do that if your solution has robust security. So an example of this, let's say you have five business units in your, in your organization which send you data. As you're loading that data into your centralized information reporting tool, that data is hopefully being validated against various IRS validations and rules to make sure that there are no issues, the proper fields are filled out, and any records that aren't meeting those requirements should be getting rejected or flagged in some manner so that they can be addressed. In a lot of organizations, it's the information reporting or tax group which is making those changes. Ideally, what you want to do is you want to allow the actual business units direct access to the information reporting tool, but only if you can restrict what they can do and what they can see. So ideally, each of those five business units have a user or multiple users which can actually log into the tax tool. They can look at their specific rejected records and they can actually make the corrections themselves, do the research, and make the updates right then and there. And then you in the tax department can run reports, this is all centralized, a reject report, see which business units have made their corrections, which ones haven't, who do you need to talk to. Uh, also, it's going to kind of put some of that onus of providing bad data back on the business unit. If they're the ones that actually have to correct all that data themselves, they're probably going to pay more attention as they're putting it in because they're the ones that actually have to put the time in to correct it. So it's kind of a double win uh, in that case. Uh, and then from a security standpoint, another thing we often hear is that customer service folks don't have access to the tax information, again, from a security standpoint. I, I actually, uh, in talking to one organization, they tried to open up um, and allow their customer service folks to use the tax system and they actually found that, you know, 
generally by just pure mistake that people were accidentally editing forms that they shouldn't be and, and it created kind of havoc. So in an ideal world, you do allow those customer service folks into the tax system so that when people call, they can know what was mailed out, they can do simple things like reprints uh, and, and look at the data and help clients. But again, you only can do that if your system has the proper features to allow secure access. So in some cases, it might be your customer service folks have read-only access so they can't see uh, or they can't change anything. Or maybe there's certain fields they can change, like you'll allow them to do address changes, uh, but you won't allow them to change TINs or names or dollar amounts. You can alleviate a lot of workload in the back office by opening up some of these uh, tasks to the customer service folks. And again, you want to make sure that your system is tracking changes appropriately, only letting them change what's allowable and all that good stuff. So security is huge and, and um, not only is it going to reduce your uh, risk of error, um, but it can also reduce your, your workload in, in the back office. So I know we're already starting to run uh, low on time. We only have uh, four minutes left. So um, quickly, I'm going to run through just a couple uh, it, what I like to call kind of advanced features. So at the beginning, I kind of painted this almost gloomy picture of regulations are increasing, penalties are increasing. Uh, but it's not all bad. I mean, the IRS does realize that this is uh, a lot of work. It's a lot of cost to organizations. So they do and have been allowing uh, new tools and new things to be used to really help companies streamline this process. Now, of course, part of being allowed to streamline this process means that your system needs to uh, support it. So the first one that I want to talk about uh, very quickly is the IRS connection program. So uh, everyone hates B-notices. Anyone that gets B-notices knows that they're no fun to deal with. Uh, and so the IRS has offered up uh, what they call tin matching, where they will allow clients to or organizations to submit their information to the IRS anytime they want and the IRS will look at that data and will tell them whether it matches their records or doesn't match their records. And then the client can uh, proactively solicit or gather updated information before they transmit the data to the IRS, thus avoiding the entire PNORS process altogether which is, is huge. It's a, it's a great victory for the organization. It's a great victory for your customers. Uh, your customers don't like getting in correct form, so if you can get stuff corrected up front uh, ahead of the whole B notice situation, uh, it's going to be great for uh, everybody. It's going to reduce your B notices, reduce your penalties, reduce your corrections, which again is going to reduce penalties and, and not aggravate your clients. So it's definitely a win-win type situation. And the best part is it's free. You just need to, to sign up. But you'd be amazed at how many organizations out there don't take advantage of this. They continue to get the notices, continue to pay penalties. And in, with everyone that I've talked to, the reason that they don't participate in tin matching is not because they don't want to or not because they don't know about it. It's because their tool, their system, doesn't allow it, doesn't support it. So. Uh, you know, just implementing TIN matching, reducing your B notices and correction process, in essence, can, can pay by itself uh, the cost of, of changing out uh, your current systems. Uh, and then the last one that I, that I kind of want to mention again uh, is uh, e-statements or uh, posting your forms on the web. So the IRS does allow electronic statements to be delivered uh, via the web versus Print and mail. I mentioned earlier that print and mail is generally one of the highest costing components of information reporting. Well, guess what? You don't have to print and mail anything. Uh, so, again, your system needs to support putting these statements actually on the web, and you also have to uh, have your clients buy into these statements and, and actually opt in to receiving them electronically. But there's lots of organizations who get very high adoption rates and greatly reduce their print and mail costs, as well as their customer service costs, because if someone needs to inform or reprint, they can just go online. Uh, hopefully, in real time, they can get that tax statement. So a great example of this, a uh, great story from, from a client, uh, you know, April, I think it was April 13th or 14th, 
they got a call, they needed a corrected statement. There's obviously not a lot of time for the individual to file their own tax statement, and the information was wrong. So the organization uh, was able to log into their tax system, make an update in real time that that statement is uh, corrected, and that client is able to produce that form instantly and complete their taxes. So huge cost savings from a print and mail standpoint. If you implement these statements in a real time fashion, uh, that's definitely the best case scenario and you can greatly uh, increase your customer service uh, costs. So uh, as we wrap up, I know we're already a, a minute over. Um, so just real quickly from a, a key takeaway standpoint, 1099 reporting continues to increase not only in complexity uh, but also in, in regulations. Uh, the IRS does put out a lot of new tools to help streamline this process and reduce the overall cost and burden it puts on your organization. But at the end of the day, your system really needs to allow you to take advantage of these new tools. So uh, kind of if I could stress anything today, it would be don't let your system or software put your organization at risk from a penalty uh, and risk standpoint. So with that, I will turn it back over to Lauren. Great. Thank you very much, Neil. Um, one of the, or a couple of the frequently asked questions that I received throughout um, these presentations um, is, did you record it and are the slides available? And the answer to both of those questions is yes. You will receive an email from me probably early next week or maybe even over the weekend with uh, a link that will take you directly to a place where you can watch this recorded webinar and we'll also provide a, a little bit more detailed handout from today's webinar as well, just kind of detailing, removing some of those pictures and just giving you a little bit more information on each slide. So with the interest of time in mind, I'm going to go ahead. Um, we've recorded all of your questions from today's event, and so we'll definitely have someone from Convey follow up with you regarding your questions because it's very important to us that your questions get answered. Um, and then just one quick thing, if you want to stay up to date, a couple of places that you can follow Convey. Um, we have a tax news blog, so whenever there's things happening or going on with the IRS, regulatory changes, we're posting on our blog daily. So you guys can go ahead and subscribe and get daily emails. Um, you can also find us on Twitter and LinkedIn. We'll typically post our webinar events on LinkedIn as well, so you can stay up to date through that as well. If you have any other questions or um, want to talk about Convey at all, you can just visit us at convey.com or you can give us a call at 1-888-303-1099. And that concludes our webinar today. Again, thank you for joining us and have a great afternoon.